Humble Mug. Grand Blue Fantasy is a franchise I was familiar with literally by name alone, nothing else. Before this year, I couldn't have told you any of the characters' names, what the franchise was about, or anything like that. But Grand Blue Fantasy is a series that's been going strong since 2014. I was just out of the loop because, I have to admit, I've just never been able to get into mobile games. I have downloaded and tried many, but I've never managed to stick with any of them for very long. Port that mobile game over to a console and suddenly I'm into it though, I don't know, maybe I'm just weird or old school that way. Well thankfully, Grim Blue Fantasy Relink is not a mobile game, but it does originate from a mobile game franchise, and it's making me suddenly rethink every thought and every stigma that I've carried about mobile games. I am not exaggerating when I say that Grim Blue Fantasy Relink is a game of the year contender for me. With that said, I'm not going to drop any spoilers in this review, as I myself went into this game pretty much blind and felt like my experience was so much better for it. All the footage you'll see in this video will feature early parts of the game, from the opening hour or two, so that you can get a proper feel for the game without feeling like I'm giving everything away. I'll start with a general overview of what I enjoyed about the game, throwing a little bit of everything in there about why this game rocks, and then I'll jump into some of the smaller details that I think make it even more special. I stumbled upon this game somewhere online and was immediately drawn in by the art style, the game setting, and the spectacle of the battles. I was just sitting there like, I have to find out what this game is. I picked it up for the PlayStation 5 and ended up playing this game while my partner watched, and we were both constantly stopping to stare and admire the scenery. Relink has a really cool watercolor aesthetic to it, and any 90s kid who grew up with that original Ken Sugimori Pokemon artwork knows this. Watercolor in anime is a match made in heaven. Speaking of the heavens, this game features a heavy usage of airships that soar through the skies as the main mode of transportation. And there are sky colonies and floating islands everywhere. Now let's be honest, airships have been cool as hell since Super Mario Bros. 3, but it was Skies of Arcadia that really got me obsessed with games, especially RPGs that incorporate this sort of thing. And honestly, Grand Blue Fantasy Relink almost feels like that Skies of Arcadia sequel that we've never gotten with how well designed the world setting is. When it comes to the battles, this game sports this sick blend of gameplay elements from other games like Monster Hunter with these big creature feature boss battles, mixed with the fast paced action RPG gameplay that you get with some of the newer games of the E series or something like Xenoblade Chronicles. There are a ton of different characters that you get to experiment with right off the jump, and every single one of them is viable and unique from each other. I'm really impressed with how they were able to balance the gameplay for each character considering how totally different their gameplay is from each other. The main game's progression in the beginning is generally linear with the occasional hidden treasure chest off the beaten path, but the various locations you go open up as you progress further. You trade the sky exploration you have in Skies of Arcadia for more land-based exploration, and it really works for this game. And as much as I love Skies of Arcadia, a drawback to that game was in part a symptom of its big open world. It could take forever to get from one location to the next, especially with all of those random encounters. Relink has trimmed absolutely all of the fat that you'll see in a lot of other RPGs and as you play the game, you'll be pulled in and want to keep playing because the pacing is just superb. The game is divided into 9 main chapters with some post-game chapters as well that I won't spoil, and the action and stakes just keep rising and rising even when it seems like they can't possibly raise more. I mean, one of the first battles you get into within like the first 10 minutes of this game is against this massive dragon and you're wondering how can we go up from here, but you do. There are no random encounters, but rather specific battles you go through where you fight bosses or waves of enemies or both before you can get to the next area. Yes, you aren't really sailing across the skies and stumbling into random enemy battles like in Skies of Arcadia, but because the story has a linear, well-designed progression, Relink has this well-paced, episodic feeling to it that respects your time and makes you feel like you're almost watching an anime. One last overview element I wanted to touch on is this game's story. When I was gushing about this game to one of my friends, one of the first things he asked me was if I ever felt lost playing the game considering I just jumped into a franchise that's been going on for 10 years. I thought about it for a second, but my answer was no. I mean, the game does reference specific events that I'm assuming happened in the mobile game story, but thankfully, they speak about these events so generally that I never really felt like I needed to suddenly go download this mobile game and get caught up on 10 years of gameplay or boot up a lore video on YouTube to get the gist of what was going on. For example, two characters might be having a private conversation and reference the first time they met, usually just reflecting on how far they've come and how much they've grown since those early days. But they never get so far into the weeds about what they're talking about that you feel like you need to go to Google to understand. Additionally, you don't start the game like every other RPG where you have just one character who goes on an adventure and you find companions along the way and get stronger and blah blah blah. In Relink, you're jumping right into the middle of this crew's journey and so you start off with 6 playable characters and 2 companions that travel along with you. 
This is another piece to the story that may draw some apprehension in those who have never dived into the franchise before, but trust me, as a newbie myself, it's awesome. All this does is aid heavily in the game's pacing. I found myself really loving this crew quickly because I felt like I was watching these old friends who knew and cared about each other immensely. Finally, if all of that wasn't enough to convince you that you'll be fine even if you are a newbie to the franchise like I was, there are these Fate episodes that you can unlock really early in the game that actually give you a bit of background on each character and go over their past details. These play out in a sort of visual novel style and they're super chill to watch and listen to. I had these on autoplay while I had my lunch, and I would just focus on one character at a time. These Fate episodes were generally very interesting, as every character has a backstory that will tug at your heartstrings or make you at least understand them more. And just by listening to these Fate episodes, your characters get permanent stat boosts as if they leveled up, so it's a win-win for everyone. Combine these Fate episodes with the ever-expanding glossary, journal entries, and the books and archives that you can find around the world, as well as all the context that the characters give in just their general dialogue, you won't ever feel entirely lost in this new world. In summary, Grand Blue Fantasy Relink is a game with an excellent art style, world setting, gameplay, lore, characters, sense of pacing, and it really respects those who are new to the franchise. The game's 9 chapter story can be completed pretty quickly, about 15 hours or so I'd say, which was not a drawback to me at all because the main game has zero fat on it. And maybe I'll get some flack for this, but to me, it was not that far off from the pitch perfect pacing of a game like Chrono Trigger. But if you're starving for content and want to see everything else that it has to offer, Relink also has 110 side quests to complete, which is where the Monster Hunter flavor of the game really shines. There's online multiplayer, there's a very expensive post game that people have spent hundreds and hundreds of hours on since the game's release in January, so it must be fun. I also played through the game on normal, but there are several difficulty levels way above what I was playing on. Though I have beaten the main story, I'm going to keep playing, but I couldn't contain myself and I just had to get my thoughts out there after completing the main story and playing a bunch of side quests because I enjoyed this game so much. There's still a lot more for me to explore, and I think that if you're a fan of anything like Skies of Arcadia, Monster Hunter, Final Fantasy, Fantasy Star Online, Ease, Xenoblade Chronicles, or Dragon Quest, you're going to have a good time. And there are some other gameplay elements as you get into the later chapters of the game which remind me of certain other games, and these sections are decidedly different from the rest of the game that you will have played thus far. These moments were such amazing surprises for me though, so I don't want to ruin it by spoiling them. You'll just have to play for yourself to see. So now that I've gotten my main thoughts out of the way, I wanted to touch on some of the little details that my partner and I noticed and loved on our playthrough of the game's campaign, and cover them sort of humble lounge style. So this is sort of like a mini bonus episode within an episode if you dig that kind of thing. As you may know from my previous videos, I'm a sucker for little details in games that push them over the edge, and one thing I felt like I had never seen before was how this game uses its art style to combat draw distance limitations. If you're not familiar with what draw distance is, to put it in basic terms, that is how much space the game is able to render properly from where the camera and your character are. Even if you've never thought about it before, you've probably noticed it in a ton of games. Things that are way far out from where you are in the game's world are usually less detailed or maybe not even there until you get up closer to them. In the days of early 3D gaming, like in the 90s with the Nintendo 64 and PlayStation, developers got around that limited draw distance their consoles were able to render by incorporating lots of fog or shadows. Nowadays, a common thing you'll see is pop-up, and even some of the best of the best games have a lot of elements that just kind of pop into view. Grand Blue Fantasy Relink doesn't seem to have a lot of pop-up issues, thankfully, at least on the version of the game I played, but it does have that issue where buildings and structures way out in the distance aren't nearly as detailed. But Relink is able to take advantage of its art style to make this fact a non-issue. Less detailed structures in the distance are rendered in that watercolor aesthetic that's so prevalent already in the game's art style. So while this building here in the main town, for example, is less detailed when you're far away, it looks just as appealing from a distance due to the watercolor filtering that they add to it. Additionally, the skyboxes and backgrounds are more like paintings or the pre-rendered backgrounds that we were used to seeing in the early 2000s rather than 3D models. Again, this was so awesome for me to see in 2024 because pre-rendered backgrounds were an innovation that allowed a lot of games in the early 3D days, especially JRPGs on the original PlayStation, to punch way above their weight class in terms of graphics and art style. But now that 3D modeling and lighting has gotten so much better, you don't really see it anymore. Here, for example, you can see the sky and an island in the distance. And while it's clearly an image rather than a 3D space, it looks superb because it blends with the game's art style so well. If they had instead chosen to model an island with polygons, it might have been serviceable, but I think it would have made the game look less unique overall, and it may begin to show its age years and years from now. 
An element my partner pointed out to me that she really liked about this game was the character dialogue. The characters talk constantly in battle, but the English voiceover work is actually really great in my opinion, and the dialogue is more of a commentary on what's going on in the battle rather than the characters just merely shouting out attack names. Somebody call for the cavalry? You're so corny. Let's just take down the monster already. We're safe! <laughs> Looking good. Kiss you guys. <laughs> Just like Glad to see you too, Burn. Get in position, people. We can take it out of the Reaper attack. As I was doing the actual gaming and was in the thick of it with these fights, I didn't notice this detail at first, but she definitely did, as she's someone who had to sit through watching me play games like Star Ocean, The Second Story R, where the characters say the same voice lines over and over and over again. Well, I'd say that's worth 10 out of 10. A lot of games fall victim to this and it can get annoying fast, but the conversations this party has both in the overworld while walking around and while in battle are clearly well thought out and help make the game world more believable and appealing. Additionally, when you get the chance to recruit other characters outside of the initial party into your party, they do actually add to the conversations as well. Considering these characters are optional recruits, I honestly wasn't expecting this level of detail. Finally, I loved just exploring the various locations and eavesdropping on the side conversations that NPCs were having. They always added a little more flavor to a world that was already pretty flavorful. And again, I just really liked how intentional the design of this game's campaign was. I think if I could use one word to describe it, intentional is probably the one I would use. No single element was wasted and there was zero fluff in my eyes. Also, you may have noticed this already, but yes, I did name my main character Goblin. I, I don't know. His default name is Gran, and so G names I guess were on my mind, and I love goblins, so I just rolled with it. And then ironically, and I promise I didn't know this ahead of time, some of the first enemies you fight in the game are in fact goblins. I bet they were a little confused when someone bearing their namesake clobbered their heads in. It made for some laughs for sure, and as I got to play the game more, I felt like the name was oddly endearing. So anyway, in conclusion, Grand Blue Fantasy Relink is a game that I'm going to think about and remember for a long, long time. And it's got me thinking much differently about mobile games as well. It's a wonderful world to spend some time in and well worth it, whether you're here for the main story only or if you want to see everything the game has to offer and pour hundreds of hours into it. I am truly, truly impressed, and I can say for sure that I'm a Grand Blue fan now. It is absolutely a Game of the Year contender for me, and I'm so excited to keep playing more. If you're still here, thanks so much for watching, and as always, stay humble.